This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, let me tell you what's happening today. I've had a couple of requests to do this kind of video um, and I've always put it off, but I'm going to bite the bullet and do it today. What I'm talking about is people have been asking for a video about how I make a video. Um, so I thought I'd just kind of bite the bullet and do it, as I say. Currently, what I'm waiting for is uh, I'm waiting for delivery of this guitar, this vintage V72H, that um, by the time you're watching this video, it will have arrived, and you've probably watched at least one video that I've done with it, um, certainly the video where I'm shopping for it. Um, so I'm looking at this guitar, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to um, you know, make videos or at least one video, possibly a few more, uh, about this guitar. It's going to need, at some point, a piece of music to showcase it. And looking at it, it's got that sort of very 70s, vintage -y kind of vibe to it. And um, if you remember in the, in the video where I was shopping for it, it was a bit of a toss-up between this and the uh, Squire Classic Vibe 70s Thin Line uh, Telecaster. And you may also recall that it was literally a coin toss that decided which one I bought. Um, so it's got that sort of 70s vibe to it, uh, and I'm thinking, who used a humbucker-equipped Telecaster in the 70s? Um, well, the name Keith Richards springs to mind, so I'm thinking around that kind of bluesy rock kind of uh, way of thinking. Um, so I've had a bit of a play around and thinking about a chord sequence that I can base the piece of music on, and I came up with this. And that would probably be, you know, what I would think of as the verse of the tune. And, you know, I like to have some kind of uh, relief from that. So we'll, we'll build a chorus in as well. And I do like to just put a little bit of a tonality shift in there. So, you know, given that, you know, we're doing kind of a blues rock kind of thing here. Um, you know, we're in G major. Well, quite often in blues, you, you start thinking about um, that sort of balancing act between major and minor, you know, so G major with a G minor feel either alongside it over the or over the top of it. So thinking G minor, what chords have I got that I can use there? Well, I've got a B flat and an F and maybe if I'm thinking of like a Dorian G minor, I've got a C in there, and you know I've got an E flat in C ma in G minor as well. So you know, just maybe going something like this for the chorus. into the verse section like that. I reckon I can make those um, two elements work together for a piece of music, so uh, I'm going to get busy in Reaper now and start putting uh, a bit of a basic backing track together for that piece. Okay, before we get into the recording of the tune, what I usually do before I start that is uh, map out the uh, the tune like this on a chord chart. Then I basically I can read what I'm going to be playing and I know how many bars of drums to do and and all of that sort of stuff and to uh, get all of the uh, the groundwork prepared. So that's what I'm going to be working from as I go into Reaper and start making the recording. Okay, here I am in Reaper and the first thing I need to do is is set the tempo and that's going to be 74 beats per minute and then before we go any further let's save this project uh, let's save it into a new folder and I'm just going to call this v72h review um, so there we go 
Uh, first thing we need are some drums. So let's import or insert virtual instrument on new track. And this is the drum plugin I always use, MT Power Drum Kit. Basic, easy to use, um, and good enough for my purposes. And hello, we've got not responding. Uh, no, there we're back again like that. So this is what we get. And uh, for some reason, I always find that you've got three levels of velocity here with uh, MT Power Drum Kit. It always just sounds more realistic on the... Um, soft setting so first thing i need is um to insert a new midi item here so let's just do that and this is just going to be me counting so one two three four like that and then um i'm just going to need some kind of um you know guide to uh, playing that initial strummy part so i'm just going to do like a hi-hat on beats two and four so there we go like that and it's a four bar intro so i want three bars of that and then there'll be a bar of like intro from here so um just use this one here that's usually a pretty safe one to go for and We'll take the uh, the one and the three out. There we go, because we're just keeping, as I say, on beats two and four on the hi-hat. Uh, next thing I want is the first verse. So I'm just going to have a listen for, um, you know, a suitable drum loop here. Maybe not. That'll do. Now, I want seven bars of this because I'm basically going to do an eight bar verse and a one bar fill. So I'll just stick fill number one in there. You see how easy this is to use. You just choose whichever loop you want from uh, the, the, the groove and then put a fill on the end and then just drag and drop that into, uh, the, uh, into the drum track there. Now, what I want to do on here is just go into this... Um, section and select all the snare drums i want to turn them into cross sticks for this so i'll just do that and then i've got you know a nice quiet verse so coming in from here we get of course you're only hearing this coming down the uh, microphone at the moment so um, you know, it will sound better than that when you hear the final thing. So that's the first verse done. Uh, now I want to go to fill every th uh, four bars. So let's go for a three bar loop and we'll do uh, this and this three bar groove and one bar fill. Two lots of that. That gives me an eight bar verse and just drag and drop that into there. So that's basically how I'm putting the drum track together and I'll plod on through this and do um, the rest of the drums and the next thing you'll see me see is me playing some bass with this. And once the bass part is uh, put down, then it's time to start putting the rhythm guitar parts on. And fortunately, the guitar has turned up. So let's get the rhythm parts recorded.
and in order to get the guitar tones that you're hearing there I'm using various different plugins I'm recording obviously into Reaper and the guitar is going into the PC via my interface which is a Behringer Euphoria UMC 22 a lot of people um, kind of have bad things to say about it uh, it doesn't work or it's unreliable or you know whatever um, but all I can tell you is I've used it for a while now since the day I plugged it in it worked and it just does it does what I need to do and it's um, you know it's never given me any hassle so if it ain't broke don't fix it then that's getting me guitar into the PC what I'm doing once it's there inside Reaper is I'm adding various plugins uh, depending on what kind of guitar sound I want three that I use mainly are bias amp 2 by positive grid or native instruments guitar rig or that uh, crunchy uh, power chord sound that you just heard there was a free one called Blue Cat Free Amp um, which does a really good kind of martial plexi tone I find and as I said I'm just recording straight into Reaper with those tones once the rhythm guitar parts are done it's time to start thinking about the lead guitar part and this is just Basically, I start off with um, knowing what the chord sequence is and therefore knowing what scale will fit over that chord sequence, um, either pentatonic or mode or whatever. And uh, then the, the, the essence of getting something tuneful and melodic, I find, is to basically make sure that any prominent notes that you are playing as part of your lead part are notes from whatever the underlying chord is at any given moment. So I, I know all this sort of stuff, so then I'll just start, start sort of experimenting um, you know, and record a trial melody or lead part and then listen back to it and think, OK, maybe that needs a bit of tweaking or whatever. And basically over a period of maybe, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour, I'll come up with a basic idea for something that I'm going to play. And then I'll sit and um, just improvise around that. <laughs> So I have a basic plan and then I just basically improvise around that until I get a take that I like or sometimes it's multiple takes and I'll edit them together and you know come up with something that's maybe a bit of a composite and once I've done all of that once I've got the piece of music finished and once I've start finished doing all my kind of usual blurb to the camera all the blethering bits of the video when I'm you know saying hello chaps at the beginning and at the end I'm saying you know and don't forget the live stream every Friday once I've got all of the different elements of the video shot basically it's time to start editing editing them together and here's how I do that okay then here we are in my video editing software this is VideoPad by NCH software um, I haven't always used this but have been using it for many years now essentially back in the mists of ancient history or Windows XP as we call it uh, I used to use the um, the built-in Windows Movie Maker software in Windows but when you go to Windows 7 that's no longer there so I found this alternative it's free for personal use uh, or if you're using it professionally like me it's uh, there's a small charge I forget how much it is um, and what we've got here are all of the different clips of the video that you've seen up to now basically so what I'm doing now is editing together the part of the video that you've just been watching and you can see I, when I save the clips I, I number them so I know which order to put them in and there's the intro this is me doing the hello chaps bits and pieces um, you know and then what's next doing the drums so at once again just drag and drop this into the timeline like this then I want to transition between the two so I'm going to click on this little uh, area here and I've got all of these different transitions you know um, blur crossfade dissolve fade reveal right to left and so on I just tend to use a simple crossfade like that and then just start putting the uh, the other bits and pieces of the video in like this and um, then once it's done um, there we go once it's done once I've got everything uh, put together just export video and it saves as a as an AVI file and um, then you know upload to YouTube basically <laughs> 
So that is pretty much the process from start to finish. In terms of how long a video takes me to put together, I really don't know. I mean, the, the ones where I'm doing like the top five Tuesday, where it's just like me talking to a camera for 15 minutes, take about 15 minutes to make. And um, in terms of the, um, the, the cost benefit analysis, uh, that's a very short amount of time to put into a video that usually does reasonably well. So that's why uh, I enjoy doing those videos and you guys I seem to enjoy watching them but anything like this where there's you know a piece of music that has to be written and recorded and tabbed out and everything uh, obviously that's going to take longer just doing the piece of music alone uh, for like the one that you've seen earlier will be a good two or three hours work by the time I've you know put all of the guitar parts together and you written it put the guitar parts together and you know mixed it and um, tabbed it all out and everything so I don't know. I mean, the, the nature of my working day is that I have guitar lessons um, throughout the day and then gaps between the lessons, maybe an hour here, maybe an hour and a half there. And that's when I, uh, you know, I start getting busy with putting the, the, the music together or tabbing it out or editing clips of video together and stuff like this. So it's just bits and pieces of time spread over a few days that, um, that usually... Um, put a video together like this uh, people often ask about the tabbing out as well uh, how do you go about tabbing stuff out well I've done a video on that in uh, its entirety it, it is another entire topic by itself um, suffice to say that you do need to have a pretty good knowledge of note values and rhythmic notation and stuff like that which I've done videos on in the past but if you're interested in the tabbing stuff um, I did an entire video as I said on that uh, oh, over a year ago that's what it looks like there and I'll link to it in the description so if you're interested in uh, you know looking at um, how I put the tabs together that end up on patreon and so on then check out that video and on the topic of patreon if you've enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel uh, you can check out my patreon there's the address and the link is in the description as I said you get all kinds of uh, tabs all of the solos that you see up on this channel are all tabbed out and up on patreon uh, guitar pro format PDF format backing tracks to go along with them uh, and there's some exclusive stuff once a month as well on the first of every month i do like a little podcast and a bonus video for my uh, patreon supporters thank you so much all of you you know who you are it is massively massively appreciated as is all of the other ways that you can support me which are all linked down in the description down there there's courses you can sign up for and all manner of stuff as i say massively appreciated i'm truly grateful to everybody who helps out and keeps helps me keep the lights on around here uh, thank you so much much and that is pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it as i'm sure i probably said earlier on in the video don't forget the live stream friday 5 p.m uk time we drink beer we talk music we talk guitars what a cracking way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourself folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now